Hello, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a tech advocate with Cisco Learning and Certifications. Hey, everyone. I'm Matt DiNapoli. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode 69 of DevNet Snack Minute. DevNet Snack Minute is your weekly 10-minute all things DevNet, where we talk about APIs, coding, or just some cool stuff that we think you might like to know. Matt, we haven't done one of those in a while. We've always had a uh, guest on, so I'm, I'm excited yeah. to do an episode with you. What are we talking about today? Um, so I'm really excited to talk about our new learning experience. So for everyone that has been a, an avid follower of DevNet for the last eight years or so, um, whenever mm -hmm. they came to our learning labs, they would see what I'm showing right here, our DevNet Learning Labs landing page. Um, we would have our list of modules and our list of tracks. And the experience was okay. Um, you know, you go into a lab and you click through the steps and you'd, you know, read what was going on. But the challenging part of all this is that if you were doing something hands on, you had to install software on your local machine or you had to use a dev pod that we created. And there's a lot of headache that goes around with that. And actually, one of the biggest challenges that we have in any lesson that we go through, whether it be at a workshop or if we're um, you know, doing a hands on experience with a group of people, getting them to be able to install things as necessary appropriately is such a headache, right? <laughs> Yeah, and like, and also supporting different platforms because you get you get. Well, I have a Mac, I have a PC, I'm running Linux, and so like having to accommodate for all the different flavors was kind of a pain. Yeah, and not to mention multiple versions of Python. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, getting anyone to install a 2.0 or a 2.x version of Python and then having them install a 3.x version was always a, a pain in the butt. Um, and so what we thought right. was, well, what if there was a way that we could abstract that effort um, away from the users and the learners and really just focus on the lesson? And um, so what we what we came up with here at DevNet was what we're calling either Learning Lab 2.0 or Learning Lab Center or Learning Center, um, which really embeds the environment into the lesson itself. So we can don't have to worry about installing the software. We don't have to wor worry about making sure everything's configured appropriately. And we can just focus on the lesson at hand and really um, consolidate the learning experience. Um, so really excited to be doing this. Uh, we actually have been using it uh, in other ways, shapes, and forms over the last couple of years, but now we're, we're pushing it um, live publicly soon um, to allow everyone to get this really cool learning experience. This is exciting, Matt. I'm, I mean, it's uh, it's not just a facelift and a new landing page, actually. It's a full revamp of the experience, which is great. I love how the learning tracks, modules, and labs kind of um, uh, logical um, um, separation is still is still part of it um, because that's a that was a huge thing for me while we're we're working on this on the platform is being able to divide these into labs to tracks modules and labs so it's great that that was kept yeah. Yeah, and it really allows people to focus on the uh, area of expertise that they want to learn about um, or even expand their horizons without having to dig around and try and figure out the various areas that um, might be applicable to them. And so uh, I, I thought our team did a really, really good job of being able to split out the tracks for the larger pieces of, of material. Um, we have very focused areas around modules as well. So if you pop into the modules, it tends to focus on a very specific piece that would fall within a track. And and then the labs themselves are the actual individual pieces of learning content that we'd be working right. with. Um, okay, okay. I want to really... see. I want to see what does it look what it looks like. Come on. Okay, okay, okay. I'm I'm getting. Uh, so I'm going to do a Meraki one because I always do a Meraki one. And because you um, do a Meraki one. It, it, well, just, and I I wrote the Meraki. labs and I wanted you know I'm really excited about how they work. Uh, so uh, <laughs> you 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 come into the introduction, you get a, a taste for what you're going to learn in the lab, and then you hit the cool start learning button. And the best part of all of this is that, as you can see, the editor and the terminal are embedded. And once the uh, backend services are all spun up, now we have access to the terminal. I can see what's going on in my directory. I'll make it a little bit bigger so you guys can see it. Oop. And I can change directories and do all the things that you might do in a, in a bash command line for um, Linux services, okay? Up top here, 
Um, we have access to all of the code and files and things that we would want to go through. And so for this one, I'm going to be using the webhook receiver um, activity. And since I have it all blown up, it looks a little, a little, um, a little crowded. But if we were to zoom out here, we can see that we can look at the entire file and look at all the code that's being in there. It's all code highlighted and um, this is clean. really exciting. Yeah, it's really clean. And then the lesson itself is running on the left rail here. And I'll blow it back up again so you can see the kind of stuff that can occur. Um, we can actually pass commands from the uh, lesson itself into the terminal um, and allow us to actually run things as necessary. So it takes away a little bit of the typing. And we do lose a little bit of the muscle memory from things that you might have to do. Um, but again, it's really focusing on less on the, the actual motion of doing things, but more focused on what is actually occurring. And so for this one, um, I had to do a little setup uh, to uh, what we're doing right now is we're setting up a receiving service to collect webhooks. Um, and we're also going to be using um, the uh, Meraki cloud simulator uh, within this tool as well. <laughs> Before before you drill into the lab itself, uh, just just for me to understand, what are what is the underlying infrastructure here? Like, are you are you connecting to a dev box? What what's like? Because I I'm I'm looking at an IDE essentially, right? Which uh which I can edit, mm -hmm. and then I'm looking at a terminal. So what's what's there, and what do I have full access to this? Is it limited? Yeah, that's an excellent question, Cream. So. Um, Behind the scenes are essentially ephemeral containers that are being spun up that contain the developer environment that you're working with and all the source code that you're potentially using for that lesson. And um, that goes and runs in the cloud. And it's only uh, running while you're in the lab itself or while you're in the session for the lab. And so, um, you know, because there are we are accessing some other backend services that potentially um, could tie into DevNet Sandbox or tie into uh, for this one, we're just running everything locally within the container. Um, but there are certain scenarios where we are providing access just for the lab itself. Um, and uh, for all of these, we set it up so that you can't necessarily install anything we don't want you to install. Um, you know, there are uh, services going on behind the scenes that um, we have to make sure that we maintain from a security aspect and uh, a cost uh, management as aspect. And so um, we do have these environments relatively controlled, um, but we give some leeway based on what we need people to do or learn or try out. Um, so it is very thoughtful in the way the labs are built and the way the containers themselves are built for any specific lesson. So we, I, I love how we're kind of drinking drinking our own champagne here because we, we've been talking about cloud, we've been talking about containers, we've been talking about this. So we actually using what we're teaching to implement a new learning platform, which is cool. Now, the really cool thing, Kareem, and I don't know if anyone else appreciates this as much as I do, but this is all running in a container, but we can also run containers in the container. And I know that sounds a little strange, but from a learning aspect, it's super helpful because then we can start to talk about cloud native applications and we can actually deploy deploy um, lighter weight versions of Kubernetes within this container that is then orchestrating containers that are running applications in that. So uh, for those of you that are interested in those type, type of lessons, um, if we don't have it yet, we're putting out more and more uh, labs that are going to be talking about application development methodologies, um, ideas around cloud native, um, shifting left and testing and security. Um, and that is all really tied to these microservices architectures that fit into um, these nice little containers and learning aspects. Uh, so that part's super exciting. And then <laughs> this is the best like actual part in my mind, Kareem. I don't know if you, you're gonna like this or not, but I got excited when I found out this is what our engineering team did. So um, for any of these containers, it generates a publicly accessible for the time the container oh. exists URL. What that means is I can run web apps in the container and then use them or access them or provide them as receiving services for things like webhooks. So for those that of you that awesome. might have seen some of my, yeah, some of the uh, previous Meraki things that we've talked about, for some of the lessons that we do, uh, we use the Meraki Cloud Simulator. And so what I'm doing right now is I'm running the Cloud Simulator inside the learning activity, wherever I had that, 
And now I can access that publicly for the time being that I'm actually going through this process. And we can see the simulator now is, is generating some, some data that I'm not collecting yet because I actually haven't set up my receiver to do so. Um, and we actually, unfortunately, I don't think have time for that. Kareem, do you do you want me to go through the rest of the no, lab? Or I, I don't. Uh, I don't think. I think we're running out of time. But I'm. I, I have a couple of things before we go. Uh, please. First thing first is, how do I get access to this, and where do I? When when do I get to play with it? Um, because I know it's not live yet. Yeah, so we're um, doing kind of a, a preview access uh, currently. And so if you want to gain access to that, uh, go ahead and fill out this form in the link below. Um, and also, we will be using this at Cisco Live um, for walk-up kiosks. And we're actually using this in uh, a lot of our workshops that we're running at Cisco Live as well, which is super exciting because now we don't have to set up all these laptops. Everything's contained yes. in the web. It is, It is. yeah, isn't that glorious? <laughs> I'm excited because I'm running a session on on the new platform, and I'm excited to be running that. It's it's going to be a new experience. Yeah, a really new a new uh, dawn in the uh, learning lab era for Cisco DevNet. We're really excited. And before before we let the snackers go, can you go back to our original learning platform, learning labs, and can you tell me on the landing page? Do you remember where that picture was taken? The with the laptop. Uh um, I'm, I might guess that we might have been our first Cisco Live. No, this was, if you no. remember, we were at, we were at a hackathon in Milan. And it was, this was oh. our first hackathon that we ran with DevNet. Um, okay, so 2015. Memory, so so yeah, this I is, to yeah, this, we're ready for a facelift seven years later. So uh, everyone <laughs> yeah, snackers, enjoy, later. enjoy the new learning experience. <laughs> thank you, Matt, for uh, walking us through this. Uh, and thank you, snackers. All right. Thanks, man.